This is the first revision video for grade 11 maths. And all the questions that we deal with in this video are based on the 2019 block test. Whilst I'm going through these questions, I want you to notice how exactly I approach them as well as how I answer them. Because you might start off and look at a question like this and it seems quite daunting at first. But watch how I go through breaking the question down so that I can answer it a little bit more easily. So all these questions come from that block test and if you're able to, you can download it for yourself or if your teacher's given it to you, you can follow along with me now. What I would recommend is that you attempt the questions yourself first and then you watch the video as to how I answer them. So first question is question 1.2 and it starts off by saying show that. Now, whenever a question says show that, what's important for you to remember is that you have to break it down. So you need to break it down into a left-hand side and a right-hand side. So what I mean by that is start off by saying left-hand side and it equals P minus P to the negative one all over P to the half plus P to the negative a half. And in this particular example, and in fact, in 90% of the examples that you deal with in grade 11 and 12, you will usually start dealing with the left-hand side first. And in this question, it's fairly obvious that the left-hand side is far more complex than the right-hand side. So whilst looking at a question like this, I always tell my students, have a look at the numerator and have a look at the denominator and ask yourself, how many terms do I have in these questions? So looking at the numerator, you will see that you have two terms. And in the denominator, you have one term. You see the bracket makes out as though we only have one term. If you ever have more than one term, so in other words, if you have two or more terms, then you can't cancel. So immediately out the blocks, you know that you can't cancel anything in this question because you've got more than one term in the numerator. How we combat that is by trying things like factorization, distribution, taking out a common factor, things like that, in order to reduce the number of terms that we have so that we can cancel out numbers. So let's go ahead and answer this question. In the numerator, you will see that we've got p minus p to the negative a half, negative one. Now that exponent there of negative one means that our numerator in fact looks like this, p minus one over p over. Now, looking at the denominator, you will see that it's got this square over here. Now, whenever you see an exponent outside a bracket, go and have a look inside the bracket. In this case, we have a plus. That means we have more than one term inside the bracket. If we have more than one term inside a bracket, you have to FOIL. And as I say to my class, you FOIL or you fail. So just watch out for that so that you don't end up making silly mistakes and getting questions wrong because you didn't FOIL out a bracket when you know how to FOIL. So with that squared there, Write it out long ways for yourself. Don't skip steps. So it's going to be p to the half plus p to the negative a half all multiplied by p to the half plus p to the negative half. Now that we've got that, focus again back on the numerator. And you'll see that in this numerator, we need to find an LCD. Now, we find that LCD in this case to be p. So if I use it, I'll get p squared minus 1 over p all over, and here's where our foiling comes into play. Firsts, outers, inners, lasts. And again, every single term here has the same base. So when we've got the same base and we've got exponents, we add the exponents. And we know that law back from when we were dealing with exponents. So if I've got x to the a times x to the b 
it becomes x to the a plus b. So it's exactly the same principle here. Looking at the first and the first, it's p to the power of a half times p to the power of a half. And we know that a half plus a half is p to the power of 1. Moving on then to the second terms, we will be multiplying p to a half times p to a negative half. A half plus a negative half will give us 0. So we've got p to the power of 0. We'll come back to that in a second. Then we can go and deal with the inner term. So for the inner term, it's going to be negative a half plus a half. Again, is 0, so p to the power of 0. And finally, we'll deal with the last two terms, this one and this one, where it's minus a half minus a half, and that will give us p to the power of negative 1. Again, going back to those laws of exponents, we know that p to the power of 0, or in fact anything to the power of 0, is 1. So, we'll get p squared minus 1 over p in our numerator over p plus, that's 1 and that's 1, so 1 plus 1 is 2, plus p to the negative 1. Here's where you might get a little bit stuck. Because you're thinking to yourself, I've got something over here that basically looks nothing like what I've got over here. So how on earth am I going to make those two things the same? Well, again, just keep following your laws of exponents, rational exponents in this case, and see where you end up. Just keep working through it. So problem number one. We've got p to the negative 1 over here. So just like we did in the numerator in the first step, I could write this as p squared minus 1 over p. And using the bottom, writing this out as 1 over p, and then a lowest common denominator of p, I'll end up with a term that is p squared plus 2p plus 1 all over p. Now we're ending up with an expression where we have three terms in the denominator and two terms in the numerator. Remember our goal from the beginning was to make sure that we only have one term so that we can cancel things out. So we're going to tip in times. And when we tip in times, it's going to become p squared minus 1 over p multiplied by p over p squared plus 2p plus 1. The p's will cancel out. But before we do that, I just want you guys to see that in the numerator here, we can do a difference of two squares. And in the denominator over here, we've got a trinomial or a quadratic. So if I go and factorize those two pieces, do you see how I'm going to get p plus 1? p minus 1 over p plus 1 squared. That's what happens if I go and factorize those two terms. So I factorize the difference of two squares like that, and I factorize the trinomial like that. Take a moment to explain it to yourself how I did the factorization. But going on from there, you'll see that that squared will cancel with the p plus 1, and I'm left with p minus 1 over p plus 1. And is that not exactly what I had in the right-hand side over there? Yes, it is. So I can write at the bottom equals left-hand side, or equals right-hand side, rather. And that is your answer to this question. It's quite a tough question for six marks. But again, I simply applied rules of distribution when I foiled out that bracket in the beginning. Once I had done that, I simply used my rational exponents and lowest common denominators. And in my last step, I used basic factorization that I learned in grade 10 to get my final answer. So that's question 1.2 from the block test. We're now going to move on and look at another question.
So the next question that we're looking at is question 2.1.3. And you can clearly see in this question that again, it's for six marks. So you're probably going to see that this is quite a tough question as well to work through. When looking at this, we know that we dealt with these questions when dealing with chapter one and quadratic equations. And there was one bit of advice that I gave you. Whenever you see a square root in a question, you know that your final step, you have to check your answer. That's one of the main things that we have to deal with in this question. So the steps that we followed was firstly to get the root by itself. That was step number one. Then secondly, we went ahead and we had to square both sides. And then thirdly, we simply solve the equation. Okay, so get the root by itself, square both sides, solve the equation. To get the root by itself, I'm going to have to add 1 to both sides so that that 1 moves across. And I'm going to be left with 3x plus 2 is equal to 2x minus 5 when I move that 1 over. Then I said get the root by itself. We've done that. So step 1 is done. Step 2 is to square both sides. So I put a square bracket in on both sides. Again, as we mentioned earlier, I've got a minus inside this bracket. And so this outside here needs to be foiled. I have to foil. So when I foil this out, on the left hand side, I'm going to be left with 9 and x plus 2, because 3 squared is 9, and x plus 2 all squared is just x plus 2. And I'm going to foil out the right hand side. Doing that, I'm going to be left with. 4x squared minus 20x plus 25. Now we've got a basic quadratic equation where we need to group like terms. I'll first distribute that 9 into the bracket. So I'm going to get 9x plus 18 is equal to 4x squared minus 20x plus 25. I group my like terms and I end up with a quadratic expression that looks like 4x squared minus 29x plus 7 is equal to 0. This is now just a standard quadratic formula that I'd need to use in order to solve this. And you can see that it's in standard form. Always get your quadratic equations into standard form first. No matter what question you're dealing with from that chapter, it has to be in standard form first. So I can use my quadratic formula and it's going to be x is equal to minus minus 29 plus or minus the square root of minus 29 squared minus 4 times 4 times 7 all over 2 times 4. And when I plug that in my calculator, I'm left with two solutions. X is equal to 7 or X is equal to 1 over 4. But in the beginning, I said you have to check your answer. So when I go and I substitute X equals 7 back into both sides of the equation, I see that it works on both sides. But when I go and take the x is equal to a quarter and substitute it back into the equation, I get that it doesn't work. It gives me a weird answer on the left-hand side and a different answer on the right-hand side. And so I just make a comment that this answer is not applicable. And so there's my answer. x is equal to 7 is the only solution to the question 2.1.3.